Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here with the Man Plus. Now, I'm going to get the latest updates because winter is literally coming back next week. Cold temperatures, freezing temperatures, negative wind chills, more snow coming our way as well, multiple snowstorms, and potentially a little bit of Arctic air on the northern half of the lower 48, just like I said in yesterday's video. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Make sure you click that bell to get updates. We have a big trough coming in, and this is going to bring storms over and over and over, just going right on the east side of this trough, and it's going to bring potential snow with them as well. But this trough we're going into is actually going to go even deeper. And as you watch it, you'll see it'll bring storms all the way to Mexico, all the way to the U.S. Yucatan all the way towards the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico by western side of Cuba. A big trough coming in, bringing a lot of precipitation, bringing a lot of storms, and potentially a lot of snowfall with it as well. Multiple storms coming through. And you can see this when you look at your latest data from the EPO, East Pacific Oscillation. Your jet stream is going to start going into this deep trough. This green line is your average. You see how it hangs around for a long time. That's going to be a long lasting trough while cold air comes in as well. And you can see this from your 200 millibar winds is your jet stream. So you see for your jet stream, you have this cold air coming down and you get this trough starts building. And if you watch it, you'll see that it just keeps building all the way through the middle of February. This is where you're just bringing storms over and over on the eastern side of this trough. And watch how it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper all the way till the middle of February. A very deep trough going very deep, bringing a lot of strong winds, precipitation, and storms building up a lot of low pressure systems right on the east side of this trough. Now that was with the Euro model, and that only sees up to 10 days, which is already far, and it always changes a little bit. It's always moving parts up there, but when you look a little bit further, with GFS to see what the trend is, you can see this deep trough and you see it does hang around for quite some time, all the way into the 20s of February. Now, once again, this is bringing some rainfall towards the south. This is your precipital water because you're getting this trough, this jet stream a little bit lower, and it is going to build up all the way to the 12th and 13th. Potentially bringing snow with this as well. It's all a timing issue as far as it's going to be too warm. Is it coming overnight, daytime? The models will go back and forth. The data shows that the cold air will be there. The trough will be there. And potentially snowfall will be there. Just a timing issue with the temperatures as that swings towards the east. And we get these cold blasts coming through for February. Still showing you're going to get that 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gust all the way till Friday from that storm system that's going to brew up and bring a little bit of snow, a little bit of rain. Not a lot, but it is going to bring some winds with it. But look how that next storm system goes all the way down towards Mexico, towards the Yucatan, right into the Bay of Campeche, bringing 40, 50 miles per hour wind gust with it as that deep trough goes in and brings the storm systems up to the northeast. Still showing 50, 60, even 70 miles per hour wind gusts. Still showing all that will be offshore. Then we got that system coming from the north that might bring some 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts with that as well. And then after that, we got another southern dip coming in. And you can see that with the winds on a lower trough. So it's going to be a pretty cold, pretty long February. And we do still have that risk for high winds put out for the 14th through the 18th for the northeast. It has gone back one day. So this is what you can expect starting on Monday. Whether it's snowfall or not, you definitely got some cold temperatures coming down Monday morning on the 12th, freezing temperatures all the way into Mexico, western Texas, all the way through Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and the northeast. And this is right where you're starting to get that snowstorm build up. And you can see how it's just a little bit too warm according to the Euro, showing it will pull some freezing temperatures down as it twirls around. So we do need to watch out for a little bit of accumulation. But you can see that shot right here as the storms start to brew up. It does pull down some cold air and gets a little bit of potential snowfall coming down. And for the wind chills, you can see it's still bringing the negative 10, negative 15 degrees to the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains and higher elevations of the Four Corners for New Mexico and Arizona, even all the way into western Texas and all the way to the Ohio Valley Great Lakes. You're going to feel like you're in the teens to the 20s through the northeast but once again your highs for the day for monday is going to be right back warm again and you got this little pocket of right on the edge of freezing trying to bring some snowfall as that system starts 
moving across on Monday. This is right around noontime. And you can see how the cold temperatures, 540 line, the freezing temperatures come down and then it don't really meet up with all this precipitation. Now, as you go through Tuesday morning, then you got some cold temperatures coming back down again, and it's actually getting freezing temperatures further south into the US. And this is where the storm system is already moving further towards the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. And you can see that 540 freezing line, but you see now it's starting to meet up with the precipitation, becoming strong as it goes as well, still cyclogenesis, a strengthening low pressure, becoming a potential strong nor'easter by Tuesday morning and bringing wind chills down with that all the way towards the south towards the southeast feeling like you're in the 20s even the teens and keeping that negative 10 negative 20 degree wind chill in the higher elevations in the rocky mountains latest model run according to the euro is starting to pick up on this snowfall bringing anywhere from five to eight inches and all this blue all this pink is all nine ten inches plus and it starts getting even higher from that start bringing some towards the south central some towards the central plains. Now, this is going to change. This is still literally five days away. I will keep you updated showing these impacts and saying this will happen. It's not going to be accurate. You'll see. Plus, for the northeast, catching right back up with those temperatures again, bringing that potential nor'easter. Now, when you take a look at the latest control member of the ensembles, you see it still shows this potential snow coming towards the south, very heavy for the four corners, and for the northwest, upper midwest from Montana, North Dakota. But look how it meets up with that daytime highs again, and then it comes back in for the nighttime overnight lows. And look how the control member is saying it's going to be a lot less. Now, when you check and see what's going on with the trend, look at the Canadian picking up on that warm trend. But you see how all of them trend somewhat, some kind of snow, in the northeast now when you look with a zero run with the gfs and if you don't know this hundreds of meteorologists put up these weather balloons throughout the day for the zero run and the 12 run data that way that's the most accurate that you go by so if you ever look at the the model runs the model data and you ever wonder why it's different from run to run are you looking on zero and 12 every time because the other ones are in between you can see this here the zero run on the GFS showing it's going to be a temperature battle. Somebody's going to be getting snow. But then when you look at the 6Z, the non-balloon data, it just shows this crazy nor'easter. It shows a lot of snow, which is still what we've seen a while back as well. But the trend has been less and less. So when you go and look at the 6Z from before that, that's where you see that big snowstorm again. But when you go to look at the 12Z from yesterday, remember the zero Z and the 12Z is balloon data. Both of the balloon data runs show it's not really going to be anything. But it is going to be about timing because GFS does see that it will start off warm, but it will eventually do something in the northeast. And this is a zero run. This is a balloon data run. You see how it's just too warm and it's not meeting up with those temperatures. And then you got that 6Z run, that heavy snowfall run coming with that a little bit higher ridge going with that storm a little bit more inland. You see that? Intercoastal. That's actually what we are seeing in the ensembles for today. So when you check both ensembles, just for the Northeast, because that's the part that's still been trending throughout all these days of showing this storm, the GFS. You see the control members showing that it's just going to be too warm. It's been trending that for a while. But at the same time, you see some of these show that if it does hit, it will be intercoastal and towards New England. You can see this also on the balloon data run, the 0Z run, the next 10 days. You can see in the control member showing it might meet up while the system moves offshore, get a little 3 to 5 in all this blue, maybe 1 inch in all this gray that will melt right as, it, right as you get your daytime highs. But in all the ones you can see, there is somewhere showing that intercoastal towards New England heavy snowfall. Next 10 days with the Urals, you can see this here. Some of them showing it is going to be too warm. Some of them show it will be more northern, but it will be a big banger of a snowstorm. Maybe get Michigan in on it, but intercoastal northeast towards New England. Everywhere else just be too warm, according to what these ensembles will show. This one right here shows it could hit, but that's the only one showing that. Little. The rest of them showing the coast will be too warm for this potential nor'easter. It will be intercoastal if it comes heavy like this. And a control member for the ensembles for the Euro is still showing from February 10th through the 20th that it will pick up anywhere from three to five, three to six inches in all this blue, seven to nine in the purple, higher elevations, Rocky Mountains, Four Corners. But look how it goes across the South Central, across Missouri, 
Illinois, Indiana, right across the center of it with a 3-5, to five, and then intercoastal and northeast, and still nothing for the coast. At the same time showing right after that, we have a chance for something to still come. So our winter is not over. We got a lot of cold temperatures still coming down. Plus the latest by Weather Prediction Center. You see the meteorologist Santorelli show this. And as you go through Sunday on the 11th, you see how this surface low is going to start building up in the south central. You're getting storms in all of this red. And you're getting rain in the green. A chance of rain in the lighter colors. And as you go through Monday, you don't see no snow here as well. No snow for the South Central, none for Monday. As it goes up through Tuesday, maybe the northern half of the New England portion. That's a chance for snow and a chance for rain. And that's what they have on that. And that's the latest update. Yesterday it showed it going up on a higher ridge. Today it shows it pushing a little bit further out into the north. Still showing the same impacts by two different meteorologists. And you can see from the latest update why it's good to stay with the updates. So we have a lot of rainfall coming right back down towards the west coast from the 17th through the 20th. And moderate section in this dark green is going to bring more heavy rainfall towards southern California, towards Arizona. You also have it over here from the 14th through the 16th for Alaska. But look over here for the south and the southeast. Look how much this has lowered from last update because it's getting pushed further and further to the south. This jet stream is going all the way into the Gulf. But from the 16th through the 20th, heavy rainfall coming this way. And the only one that can see that far is literally a GFS. So I don't have a way to check for trends. But you can see over here for the west coast that is bringing potentially another two to three, maybe even four or five inches of higher elevations. Definitely more snowfall coming down. But look how it's bringing more rainfall towards y'all. And look over here for the south central and the southeast. Another chance for some very heavy rainfall coming our way. Now, once again, I'm not able to check this with any kind of trends. I will keep you updated. This is too far to be accurate. But so far, maybe a big hot spot for five to seven inches across the south and the southeast. Look at this. A big heavy rainfall potentially coming as that transitions as we go past the middle of February. And whether we get snow out of those or not, because it's just too much of a wild pattern, look at the temperatures that we got coming in. We still got cold temperatures coming in. That's still going to bring that winter feeling right back, definitely with your wind chills. So when you look at your Arctic isolation, your update, you can see how that cold air does come deeper down into the U.S. The green is your average. But you see how it comes even deeper than what we've been having. You can see the last one has been a little bit northern. This one shows it a little bit deeper. But then it pulls away on that second half as it goes all the way through the 20th. You see that? So this is going to be your coldest portion right here as that pulls away. But here's your latest update for the next 6 to 10 days. Temperature probability, you're going to be average in all the white, above average in all of the darker colors. Like I said, it's going to be spring-like. But then we got the cold air coming. And then you're going to be below average in all of this blue. And this is going to persist all the way towards the 20th and maybe a little bit further into February. Like uh, you get above average, start kicking in on the West Coast. But you get average in the white because it's below average kicking in, especially towards the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic, bringing in some cold temperatures. This is from the 14th through the 20th. So as you start literally this Saturday, you got some cold temperatures coming through. And when you look with the wind chills, you'll see the wind chills is going to be the big factor of this. Now, Sunday, it comes right back down again, bringing in those freezing temperatures. You see how it sees a little rift. It's going to get a storm system moving in. Now, with the wind chills, you can see how it's still going to stay cold, but you got a storm system moving across. And now you got negative 20, negative 30 degree wind chills in the higher elevations for sure. Now, as you go through Monday, now the storm system moves over a little bit you still got all these freezing temperatures coming in i showed you this shot already and you have the wind chills that's going to be moving in now as you go through tuesday this goes out towards the northeast look how you got that warm bubble going on that's why it's not bringing a lot of snow so far according to the euro but it's bringing freezing temperatures further down to us and once again your wind chills is going to be the biggest player of this transition next wednesday as it's pulling offshore you have cold air coming down again bringing cold wind chills with this again now this arctic blast is starting to come a little bit further towards the southern side of canada and come into lower 48 so as you start looking towards the end of the euro which does change guys we all know this 
towards the 16th, towards next Friday, cold air coming down again, and potentially some negative temperatures coming through the northern side of the lower 48, like I said in yesterday's video, and bringing a big cold spill towards Canada. Y'all please be aware you have negative 10, negative 20, almost negative 30 degree temperatures moving through. And with the wind chills, you're really going to feel it. Negative 40, negative 50, negative 20. Just a lot of cold wind chills coming through Canada and it's going through the northern side of the lower 48. The upper Midwest, now you feel like negative 10, negative 15, maybe even negative 20 or more wind chills. All the way down to Iowa, northern Illinois, y'all starting to feel like now single digits for Kansas, Missouri, starting to get towards teen temperatures all the way towards northeast and feel like you're in the 20s in the south. And it's not over yet. Because you can see with GFS, once again, only when I can see this far, once you go past the 10 days, you see that Arctic air. All this Arctic air right here, this is some very cold air up here bottled up. And it is staying somewhat blocked in a way, but it really punches hard once you come from the 15th. And as you go through the high teens, it brings in the colder temperatures. Comes further into the U.S., but all that blue right there is going to be negative temperatures. And look at this, single digits moving through as you go through the 19th bringing very cold temperatures swinging through. So the cold temperatures is going to bottle up and meet up over here towards northeast. Then it's going to pull away and bottle up for the upper Midwest and Canada as you go through the end of February. A lot of cold temperatures coming down. Thank you again for your time, everybody. That has been the latest update. I will keep you updated. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. If you never subscribed before, hit that bell so you get the updates. Uh, this is a lot of precipitation going on in the atmosphere. This isn't all of the ground level. You can see this here when you put on just your storms. There's not a lot going on right now. Well, we're about to go into this transition. So get ready. Don't put away your winter clothes just yet. Romans 6, 8 through 14. A quick reminder. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace." Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I appreciate every single one of you. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. I hope he always keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy the temperatures while you can.